The holiday season can be a magical time of year when almost anything seems possible. When even a chance meeting with a stranger can turn an otherwise quiet night into an evening long remembered. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of courage and giving that come from the heart on Rescue 911. We begin on December 31st, 1992 in the small town of Dingman's Ferry, Pennsylvania. Sisters Melissa and Tina Erb were spending their New Year's Eve at the home of Tina's best friend, 14-year-old Danielle Molly, while her parents were at a party up the street. We were sitting watching TV and talking, and we had nothing to do. <laughs> Mom and Dad were at a New Year's Eve party with their friends. It was a boring night, so I told my sister to call one of my friends. This is telephone number. Five, 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 six, six, six. Ten-year-old Melissa went to call on the portable phone. Did you do the wrong telephone number. I got this old man who was breathing heavy. I was gonna hang up, but I had a feeling that something was wrong. What's wrong? He told me that he can't catch his breath, he can't move, and he sounded like he was wheezing a lot. I was worried, because I knew that you shouldn't breathe like that. She wasn't getting the friend that we wanted to call. Do you want to call Amon? And when she said ambulance, I was like, oh, my God, what happened? Yes? Can you guys have to tell us that Hello? I asked him what was wrong, and I couldn't Hello? understand what he was saying. Do you want us to call the ambulance? They were all going crazy, so I took the telephone away from Danielle. Do you want us to call the ambulance? Hello? What's wrong? He sounded like he was in trouble, and he needed help really quick. So I knew I had to do something. I couldn't just, you know, hang up the telephone and just leave him there. Where do you live? And I got where he lived, what road he lived on, and how old he was and all that. We told him to stay by the telephone because we were going to call the ambulance. So we hung up with him, and we just all went crazy. We yelled at each other what to do and everything. We went crazy looking for the telephone number. Do you know the car check number? No. Everybody says to get the emergency numbers and put it by your telephone, but I never did because I never thought this would happen. So it's in the back, right? No. Maybe in the front. Yeah, just... Hi, County Emergency. Um, we were just um, calling somebody on our telephone, and um, we got this guy, I don't know what his name is, but he couldn't breathe, and he lives in um, Birchwood Lakes. And um, he said to call the ambulance. The girls gave Pike County Dispatcher Donna Post the information they'd gathered. We have to write everything down, the name of the caller, their address, and if they're complicated directions, we have to write them also. So if you have an excited caller, that makes it difficult. And um, he said the 11th or 12th house on the right, and he said he has his light on, and he's 82 years old, and he couldn't breathe. The 11th or 12th house on the right? 11th or 12th house on the right. Mm -hmm. And he has a light on, and he said he couldn't breathe, and he's 82 years old. All right, and he's 82 years old? Yep. You didn't, he didn't get his name, did you? No, he couldn't, he couldn't breathe. He couldn't talk a lot. Okay, uh, I'll send an ambulance out. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. She was a little excited, which is understandable, but she gave me the information I needed regardless. So it was very good. It enabled me to dispatch an ambulance without the name and without the man's phone number. We wanted to call him back. We wanted to assure him that the ambulance is on the way and that he was going to be okay. He was getting weaker, and so we just told him to hang in there, keep talking to us, don't move a lot, wait until the ambulance gets there. Just stay by the telephone, you don't have to talk. And he said, he's sorry for ruining my New Year's. And I said, you're not ruining my New Year's. And he said, thank you for helping me. 
because no one would have known I was here if you haven't called. Are you okay? He stopped breathing. The scariest part was when I thought he stopped breathing. And I was just about to cry because I didn't want him to die. Don't worry, they're, they're on their way. I said, hang in, hang in there. Don't, don't, don't move. Um, keep talking to us. Don't, don't fall, don't fall asleep. I decided, well, I'll call the girls back to see if they could remember anything else. Um, hold on, I have no call. Don't hang up, okay? All right, just stay on the phone. Hold on. Hello? I got Danielle, and she said that she had the man on the other line, which was great. I said, well, you know, I couldn't believe my luck. <laughs> Bye. She told us to hang up with Mr. Denny because she wanted to speak to him. Mr. Denny, this is Pike County Communications. He indeed was having a very difficult time breathing. I know this is going to be difficult, but I have... I was worried that maybe he might pass out, so I wanted to try to keep him calm. Okay, are you in pain? It is very frustrating because you want to jump in there and try to help him because you know they're frightened, they're scared. I was just sitting there really nervous and hoping that the ambulance would get there soon. It was very frustrating. They wanted to happen very quickly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know it's difficult. He was getting worse, and I was ready to tell the ambulance that they better expedite. But I didn't have to do that. They were there. Among the Delaware Township volunteer rescuers who responded was EMT Joseph Kupcha. What seems to be the problem? He was experiencing a heart attack, and we realized that we had an emergency here, and we had to take the man to the hospital as soon as we could. Mr. Denny, I'm the young ladies fortunately made a wrong number call to Mr. Denny, uh, saved his life. I called the girls back and I said that the ambulance had arrived and he was en route to the hospital. And of course I thanked them for their help, they were very good. The ambulance is over there and he's, he's on his way to the hospital. And good. I felt much better because now I knew that he was in good hands and he was going to get better. Then we turned on TV and the 1993 ball dropped. It was the best New Year's I ever had. 82-year-old <laughs> Daniel Denny was taken to the local hospital where he was treated for congestive heart failure. While he was there, doctors also discovered a small malignant tumor which they successfully removed. Mr. Denny, mm -hmm. I have three young ladies here who would like to see you. Bring them in. I was excited because I didn't know how he looked like. As soon as we walked in there, he just opened his eyes real wide and then he just started laughing. <laughs> My wife died in 85 and since then it's been pretty lonely. Well, this is indeed a surprise. I thought that I might pass away and nobody knew anything about it for three or four days. Oh, that's beautiful. I don't have a grandfather, and I don't think the herbs do, too. Warm thoughts and good wishes are with you every day. I have no grandchildren. I never will have any grandchildren. When Melissa asked me to be her grandfather, I, that, that was terrific. I, I, can't say. I break up then. In high school, charity. I'm starting to get back to enjoy life, and I never realized I had so many friends, and now I've got a family of my own now, too, you know, which I didn't have before. I like when he put the head down in the water. He's special because he's kind. He's also special because I saved his life. Every time after I get done talking to him, he says, I love you, I go, I love you, too. <laughs> Why are you going to go in school? Be a cheerleader? No. Huh? I feel proud of myself. I feel proud of Danielle. I feel proud of Melissa. We did something good. And we wouldn't forget that evening for our whole life. He's very nice. He's so sweet. I'm not glad that this happened to him. I wish we met him in some other way. But I'm glad that we met him. Throw him way out, Missy. I didn't know it then. But I brought in the new year. 
<laughs> with a bang. You might call it a big celebration because there's an, another lease on life. I never thought it would come to this when you were on the telephone. Huh? <laughs> Who were you trying to call anyhow? You don't remember? Next. I was very afraid because I've heard of accidents like this before, and uh, unfortunately, you usually get there to have a dead body. <laughs>